Hi everyone, welcome back to another BTLO replay. Before we jump into Miner, be sure to follow us on X, LinkedIn, or Discord to keep in touch with the BTLO community. Links are in the description box below. Right, let's get started with Nick. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the replay video for uh, Miner, which is a easy incident response lab on the BTLO platform. Uh, this is going to be a relatively short walkthrough. There is not that many questions, but uh, still a pretty fun lab. Um, yeah, so while we wait for the machine to load up, um, <clears throat> what is important to look at is really the lab details. So we can see up here that there's no uh, password for the username, so you can just log straight in using the BTLO account. Um, and it's good to go over the scenario at least. So you know what's happening. So let's go over that. Our detection team reported that they received an IDS alert related to reconnaissance, but they were unable to read the traffic as it was encrypted. PCAP files and analysis tool to available on the desktop. Please note, there are no issues with this lab. If you encounter a problem, try to solve it. This is an older lab, but um, some people tend to come back and say that Oh, because this lab's not working a particular way, it's not working, therefore it's broken. But in this instance, there is no problems with it. It works fine. <clears throat> okay, cool. So, we are in. Let's see. So, like we said, there's no password. So, just pop in BTLO. Bam. BTLO player is loading up. Cool. What's good to go over as well is also the questions. Gives you an understanding of what is happening in this scenario and what tools you could use. Um, in this instance, we have uh, two separate tools. We have Network Miner and uh, Wireshark. <coughs> so you can see here, oh, CyberChef is a common tool uh, used throughout the BTLO investigations. It's always good for just encoding and decoding hashes or whatnot. Um, okay. So we have our tools. Let's open up our investigation files. Cool. So a number of things here already. We have two packet captures and an SSL keylog. This is going to be interesting for later on. We'll get to that. So let's go over question one. According to Network Miner, what exploit attempt is being made on what protocol? So we need to open up Network Miner. Let's have a look. Let's open that up. Go on the application. So one thing to note here is that if you load these up in Network Miner, it is not going to read anything because, and I'll show you why, it's a new generation file from Wireshark. Network Miner can only read PCAP files. So what we need to do is open up our packet captures and save them as a older PCAP file, which is very simple to do. So file, save as, we'll just call it one uh, new, just for the sake of this little lab. Cool, so we'll just save it here, PCAP, bam. <coughs> Do the same with the packet capture 2, file, save as, 2, new. We'll just minimize those. We're going to get back to them in a bit. So let's try that. Just again, load in one. It's not going to work. Load in the second one, one new. Voila. There's some cool, cool, cool information we can sift through. Majority of this lab will require you to use Network Miner. However, we will go over the um, Wireshark section in the later questions. So <clears throat> let's see, let's wait for it to finish loading. Cool, we're in. So as you can see, Network Miner has now parsed through all the PCAPs and found all these different pieces of uh, juicy, juicy evidence that we can go through. 
So we got hosts, got files, images in the PCAST, there's nothing there. Some credentials, which we'll get back to. But in this instance, we want to look at things related to a potential exploit from the package capture. So let's have a look at anomalies. Right, there's a couple of things that stand out here. Eternal Blue. That is clearly a very, very, very popular exploit used. Um, and uh, the question is also asking for the protocol. And so just a quick little Google will take you to, um, or if you don't know much about external uh, Eternal Blue, um, it is a Windows SMB exploit. So just based off of that, we'll use that as the answer. So let's go Eternal Blue, comma, SMB, bam, correct. There we go. Cool. So, next question. What is the IP address of the machine responsible that is conducting network scanning using Nmap? So, we want to look at possibly, as we we're going through credentials, I saw something interesting. As you can see here, 172.16.05, quote, Nmap, quote. So, we can assume that this is the machine that was conducting the Nmap scan. So 216.05. Correct. There we go. Right now, next question is identify the command and control server. What is the host name, MAC address, and listening port numbers? So based on this, I think I'm gonna go check out the host file and see if we can find anything interesting on here. So we'll keep scrolling. Let's see. Not really much. These are all IP addresses assigned or sorted by an ascending order. Most of these just standard Amazon AWS IP addresses. There's nothing here. As you go down, you'll start to see a little bit more, something more interesting. You see some hosts here. Oh, what's this? Some Windows machines. So we got 172, 1604, 1605, 1609. These are the ones that stand out the most to me. I mean, IE9, Windows 7, IE11, Windows 18, or Windows 8.1. And obviously, as we know, 1605 is the host that's running the Nmap scan. Let's just see what else there is on here, if there's anything else. Nope. Cool, looks like we got our uh, little zone of investigation. So let's have a look. Let's open up 1603. What can we see? Uh, nothing really much that stands out. Possibly another machine on the same network. Not really doing much. We're looking for a command and control server here. So if we know that uh, 1605 was the one running the Nmap scans, it'll probably be the same subnet that's been it's not 1609 what about 1609. He's running that BIOS. And 4782 is reports. Let's give that a shot. If that's not it, then it could be 1604. It's a process of elimination here. So the host name is not 1609. Host name here would be IE11 win8 underscore one you got the MAC address which you can see right here which is zero eight zero zero two seven F E E C one E. This is the machine making all the uh, 
all the communications outwards. Port number is 139, and it's also using 4782. Cool, submit that. Got it, so it was 1609. That is a C2 server. Right, what are the banking credentials of the victim machine? So we know that the victim machine in this instance is 1604. <coughs> so what we can do is open up Wireshark because there's nothing in Network Miner that uh, pertains to any credentials except for some anti-LM hashes. We'll get back to that. Let's take a look through Wireshark. So, let's open this up. So, like I mentioned earlier, there's a SSL keylog file, which is usually used when there's encrypted traffic or encrypted um, network traffic on a packet capture so it's used to decrypt that so what we can do is load that up first before we see because right now we'll we won't see any tls traffic everything under https will just be uh encrypted we want to see some actual information so let's go to edit preferences open up the protocols tab scroll all the way down Look for TLS. Where are we at? There we go. Browse. Select SSL keylog. Done. So now it is decrypted the uh, packet capture, allowing us to view the TLS traffic and HTTP traffic in between. This will apply to both the first one and the second packet capture. So let's see what we can do. If we want to <coughs> look for the uh, source IP, would be, let's see if I remember, I, here we go, ip.crsrc underscore host equal to equals, so we want to look for the victim machine, so that is 1604. And so we're looking for banking credentials, so anything that's been sent over uh, HTTP or HTTPS. Um, because there's a lot of information here on this packet capture, we want to filter all of that out. Like, we don't want to look for Quick or anything TCP or HTTP3. Um, so let's look for uh, TLS traffic. Let's see what we can find there. There we go, so you got HTTP2, you got TLS traffic here. You can see some traffic over here, some client requests. But nothing too interesting. There's still a lot of information that we still can't see. Uh, so I'll have to sift through. So let's see. <coughs> so one thing to remember with credentials, or generally with uh, web traffic and credentials, is that Credentials used are generally posted up, right? They're sent out to a, um, a database service to validate, then obviously to allow the user to authenticate into the whatever application. Based on this, we can now filter out our, uh, our traffic capture by specifying a, <clears throat> a the HTTP request type. So what we'll do is HTTP request dot method. So there's a get method and there's post methods. What we want to do is look for post methods here. Anything where the user was sending credentials to a destination. So let's filter that out with the capital post. Let's see what comes up. Let's look for anything interesting over here. See, as we can see, there's not much 
to go through, which is good. So it really help filter our traffic down. Nothing stands out to me right now. So, but remember, we have a second packet capture. So let's apply the same filter to that and see what we can find. So, just to recap, we're looking for any traffic from the source IP, which is the victim IP, 172.16.04. We're looking for um, TLS traffic, and we're filtering out anything that contains the post request, or the post method, HTTP post method. So let's see what we can find, let's see what comes up. Hopefully we'll find some credentials here. Or some credentials being sent over the uh, over HTTP. There's a lot less traffic to go through here. Let's see, there's nothing here. Oh, here we go. We got some login. Cool. So we got 1604 towards 171, 161, 116. That doesn't matter here. So we can see a user is trying to log in over HTTP on this port. So let's open up, see what we can find. And bam. Because it was encrypted before we applied the SSL keylog, we would not be able to see this. Um, after applying that keylog, we now can see the decrypted traffic and the plain text password and credentials being sent over the uh, over HTTP. Assuming this is the only credentials that we see. So we're gonna pop that in. So we got Christy S. Nope, nope, that's the password. I'm trying Christy WW07 and Christy S Money World. Dollar sign, dollar sign. Let's see what comes up. Bam, there we go. Cool. So let's move on to the next question. What is the observed NTLM response for the challenge from victim machine? From the victim machine. Okay, cool. So, like I said earlier, we can see the credentials on Network Miner. So let's go back to Network Miner. Let's close all this noise so we can focus on this. Let's hop into the Credentials tab. And we can see some NTL, NTLM uh, communication here or NTLM hashes so we can see some NTLM hashes over here let's see what's happened cool so that is not an NTLM password that is something else it's not what we're looking for we're looking for a response so let's open this up see if we can find anything let's expand this maybe we can see that there we go. So we got the land manager response for the NTLM challenge, and this is the NTLM response that we're looking for. So let's copy that password into a notepad file because. Yep, doesn't matter. Just click continue on that. There we go. So let's copy that. Pop that into our clipboard. Control C. Go to a questions tab and submit. There we go. That is the challenge for Miner complete. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to never miss a video. In the meantime, remember to join us on Discord and tune in every Friday at 6 p.m. BST for BTLO replay. Thanks everyone, and see you next time.